Hello, a warm welcome everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar on deploying GraphQL services as managed APIs. I'm Naduni Pamudika, a senior software engineer at WSO2, working with the API manager product team. Along with me, there's Hiranya Kavishani, who is a software engineer at WSO2, also from the API manager team. Today, both of us will be walking you through the uh, what GraphQL is and how WSO2 API Manager 3.0 version supports exposing GraphQL services as managed APIs on this webinar. Here's the plan for the rest of the hour. We will be starting our discussion with a brief introduction and then why and when to use GraphQL, a brief comparison between the REST and the GraphQL. And then we will be focused on focusing on the need of an API management solution. And finally, we will be looking at how WC2 API Manager 3.0 supports GraphQL following with the live demonstration. At the end of the webinar, we will present you the roadmap on upcoming features related to GraphQL and uh, finish it off with the QA session. Let's look at what GraphQL is. Uh, at this, as a brief introduction can help you understand the details more. This introduction is not, uh, is not going into more details, but it covers the basic information on why it was invented and the benefits of it when building applications in the modern era. GraphQL is a leveraging API technology which declares a query language for your APIs. And the main advantage here is that uh, the results returned from GraphQL queries can always be predictable. It gives what you request, nothing more and nothing less. As similar to open API definition in REST APIs, uh, the heart of every GraphQL specification is an SDL, a schema definition language, which is a graph data model. And uh, it was created by Facebook in 2012 to uh, power their mobile applications. And in 2015, they released this to open source. And it, it has been revolutionized at several innovative companies like GitHub, Spotify, Yelp, and Shopify because of uh, its ability to make API calls more efficient, flexible, and developer-friendly. And uh, GraphQL is typically served over an HTTP endpoint, which expresses the full set of capabilities of a service. And uh, it is reported that uh, the Facebook has been serving thousands of client versions over a single GraphQL endpoint. And uh, this is the specification for the GraphQL. And this is the reference implementation, which is in JavaScript. And uh, the main thing is uh, it supports many languages. And you can find more details at this link. Throughout the webinar, we will be looking at the same example to make it more clear for you. So this is a sample product management service. And there's a retailer who sells products. There are customers who buy product, and there are a set of products in the store. Keep this in mind uh, as we will be referring to this example in our next set of slides. And uh, what you see in the left, left side of the slide is a type system. This is the type system of the products management GraphQL API. Each one of the uh, GraphQL APIs would have a type system similar to this. Basically, uh, this defines the capabilities of an API. And uh, all the types exposed in an API uh, are written down in a language called the GraphQL schema definition language. And it's like a contract between the client and the server. And once it is defined, both the uh, sites are aware of its data structure. There are some uh, special root types as uh, for a mutation and subscription. In the bottom, you can see a query and a 
mutation. And uh, we use queries to fetch data. For example, say a customer wants to retrieve a list of available products in the store, uh, then he or she can try out a query like this. He, uh, he or she can call to this all products query and uh, on execution uh, he, that uh, customer will get a list of products available in this store. This is the list of products you will be getting. And the uh, main thing is uh, this uh, set of data closely resembles the structure of the query. Uh, say, uh, say you can see that we have uh, requested the uh, data id name description and category and the response also we are getting the same set of data nothing more and nothing less mutations uh, so the mutations we are using for create update or delete data consider a scenario where a retailer adds a new product to the store then the uh, retailer can use the add product mutation and then it will give the response with the details we asked for. For example, uh, here the retailer adds uh, the leather shoes product to the footwear category and it uh, requests for the IG and the name as a confirmation. So, uh, as you can see in the response, you get the ID and the name. Uh, the other type is subscription and this enables servers to communicate to the client once an event occurred. Uh, this is typically implemented via web sockets using its full duplexity support. For example, uh, in this in the same products management service, a retailer will be notified uh, whenever a new customer node is created. Now let's move on to uh, discussing the differences between the GraphQL and the REST to see why and when to use GraphQLs over the REST. I am pretty sure that uh, all of you have tried the RESTful systems for years and it would be uh, interesting to know about GraphQL compared to REST. Both the REST and GraphQL are two ways of exchanging data between the client and the server. The REST-based approach is the traditional way of doing so, and uh, the GraphQL is often considered as a revolutionary method to think about APIs. Let's consider the same products management example, uh, where the retailer wants to know the list of customers who ordered a particular product. If you try this with REST, you need to do the following three API calls. Uh, initially, you need to uh, fetch the list of available products in the store. So you have to call for the products endpoint and you will see the list of available products. And we, uh, I'm going to pick the uh, product ID 2 and I'm going to fetch the customer details of that. In order to do so, I'm doing the second restore API call, passing the uh, product ID 2 to the customer's endpoint. Now I'm getting the customer's ID as C1 and C2 for, for the uh, product ID 2. So uh, as the final REST API call, I need, I, I need, I can uh, fetch the customer specific data, send in the ID one by one. So I'm doing the uh, get calls for the uh, customers, customer endpoints uh, with their customer IDs and I'll be receiving the uh, data as uh, John and Tom. So, for uh, as you saw, uh, with REST, we we need to we had to use three REST API calls. So, let's see how we can do this with GraphQL. The most important thing is in GraphQL, you can fetch only the required information by using just a single query. Here you need to send a big complex query to uh, the product type with the uh, product ID uh, and the nested customer type. Since we need to know the names, uh, I requested uh, the name in the customer nested type. So upon execution, I received the response for the product ID two and the list of customer names. 
this is the main strength of GraphQL. Uh, as I explained earlier also, in the other words, we can say, ask what you get, ask what you need, then get exactly that. Keeping that in mind, now let's look into why and when to use GraphQL. It, there's no more overfetching and underfetching. What is overfetching? Uh, often a REST endpoint will give you more information than what the client needs in a single request. So this is called as overfetching. In uh, GraphQL endpoints, the client will not get any additional information than what is requested for. So the GraphQL solves the overfetching problem. Similarly, in order to cater a requirement, a client will have to call multiple REST endpoints to get all the data it requires. This is called as underfetching. In GraphQL, this will not happen since uh, the client can request all what it wants in one go. Therefore, GraphQL also solves the underfetching problem. Uh, then it uh, fetch data using a single API call. REST services uh, provide individual endpoints for each of the resources it has. And when a developer wants to collect all the required data, he or she has to send multiple requests to different different endpoints. But uh, this is quite different with the GraphQL as uh, the GraphQL services are exposed via a single endpoint and uh, it focuses mainly on the task itself. So a developer can fetch the requested data with just one API call. And uh, it has auto-generated documentation using GraphQL and uh, it keeps it sync with the uh, API changes. So the GraphQL APIs are tightly coupled with the code and when a field or a type get changed, so do the docs. But uh, this is different, different with the REST APIs because uh, as the developers, uh, they have to uh, follow a variety of documentation standards and specifications when documenting REST APIs. And uh, GraphQL APIs are versionless. Most APIs uh, do uh, versioning when there's a limited control over the data that written from an endpoint. Say, uh, we need to introduce, an, introduce a change and it breaks the API, then uh, we need to introduce a new version in order to uh, cater that requirement. But uh, this is different with the GraphQL because uh, GraphQL takes the strong non-versioned approach by providing the tools for the continued, continued evolution of a GraphQL schema. And uh, uh, it's good for high performance. Uh, it has a high performance in data fetching network. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, say, uh, we had to uh, do three API calls, th three REST API calls to get the list of customer customers for a particular product. From gra using GraphQL, we can do it with just using a single API call. So it gives high performance in, in data fetching networks. And uh, in GraphQL, once the schema is defined, the developers work on Front end and the back end can do their work independently. So uh, the pro this provides the ability to build their APIs that are easier to evolve. This is different in REST because uh, the front end and the back end are tightly coupled. So in order to do some changes, they have to uh, do them in both the sides. And uh, this is not good for complex queries as uh, GraphQL can encounter performance bottlenecks uh, if a client requests for too many nested fields at once. So it, it, it is worth using REST APIs in such situations. Also, it is not a perfect fit for content delivery networks because GraphQL doesn't have the support for HTTP cache. Uh, in a content delivery network, web cache or a reverse proxy plays a major role. So uh, it's good to use uh, REST services in such situations. As you can see, uh, the GraphQL is not a silver bullet where it fits perfectly for all the cases. 
as developers you need to take take a sound judgment on uh, when to use graph keywords and uh, hope the above explanation cleared your understanding on it so uh, now let's move in to see how how to expose your graph keyword services as managed apis before delving into this uh, let's understand what is the need of an api management solution Uh, as you already know, uh, GraphQL API enables developers to tailor the request to retrieve the information they need by constructing the query request or mutation request to uh, multiple data sources exposed via a single endpoint using a single API call. So as you understand, using GraphQL is a great opportunity for consumers as they have more power and freedom to construct complex types of queries even though it uh, makes consumer life easier and more convenient execution of such uh, graphql queries introduce more work on the back end so uh, at the same time it needs to handle rate limiting authorization and authentication problems so uh, for graphql services it is uh, straightforward and worthwhile if it uh, has another layer to take care of all these aspects and manage the GraphQL cells so that the uh, GraphQL backend can uh, only focus on its business logic. Therefore, it is important to uh, make sure that the GraphQL services are exposed in a secure, controlled, and monitored API management environment. Let's take a look at uh, list of features which would be ideal to have in such environment. Uh, it, it's good to have the first class support for creating and publishing GraphQL APIs. Uh, what we mean by first class support here is to treat GraphQL specific characteristics, especially and apply API management to them to uh, support GraphQL specific use cases. And uh, it is good to have uh, authentication and security because uh, the APIs are mostly exposed to external users who are not a part of the system. Therefore, security plays a major role at this point and uh, as it is crucial to ensure that the users who access the API operations are authentic. So it's important to have authentication and security in this API management environment. Similarly, it's uh, good to have role-based access control for each operation. Say uh, there are operations uh, which can be done by a subset of users in your organization. Then an API management tool should be able to assign different level of permissions to it, uh, its operations, operations of the API, uh, so that uh, it can look into the incoming uh, query and decide whether to allow or block it and uh, it's uh, it's it's a valuable thing to have rate limiting in graphql operations uh, there can be specific operations which can be expensive to execute uh, allowing same rate limits for, to all the operations like them or treating all of them similarly will not be a good idea in a production system so API developers should be able to recognize these expensive operations and uh, should assign rate limits accordingly. And uh, another cool thing is uh, to have operational level analytics as analytics allows you to have fine grade insights about the data that is requested on the backend. Also, you can do low level performance monitoring of the uh, request that are processed by your server with this and uh, it's, it's always uh, good to uh, uh, detect and block malicious or un unintentional queries since the uh, client has the freedom to request any amount of data from the server a malicious request or an unintentional request with uh, nested queries can stress out, stress out the server so an API management layer can be used to protect these types of uh, requests by uh, inspecting whether query exceeds a certain limit or not. 
so the WSO2 gateway fulfills the aforementioned API management requirements for GraphQL APIs. Let's look at the values that we can provide for query operations by exposing this uh, products management GraphQL service as the managed products API through the WSO2 API gateway. Over to you, Hiranya. Uh, thank you, Nadune. Uh, now I believe uh, you would have uh, understood why it is uh, important to have an API management solution for GraphQL APIs uh, and what are the different aspects of it compared to traditional API management. Uh, let's see how uh, we can deploy a GraphQL service on WC2 API Manager 310, which offers various features to support these uh, different aspects. Uh, you know, uh, if uh, it is possible to expose GraphQL service uh, in any traditional API management platform. So that means uh, you can uh, treat it as a, a REST API. Uh, you can expose the service as REST, like uh, creating two resources, such as get resource to expose query operations and uh, post resource to expose mutation operations. But the uh, GraphQL API developers would not be satisfied uh, with these existing REST API features for GraphQL API management to work because uh, their main focus should be on the uh, query operations, not the resources. Therefore, it is essential to uh, have first class support for GraphQL APIs to serve the GraphQL specific features then API developers can manage their APIs as uh, they prefer and publish them to Gateway. WSO2 API uh, Manager Publisher fulfill those GraphQL specific requirements. Uh, first API developer can create GraphQL API by importing its SGLD uh, schema. Uh, once they are created, they can view the list of operations that are available on the SGL file and also they can separately identify the GraphQL APIs at the publisher as they have been tagged with GraphQL tag. So if they need, they are allowed to download the uh, SGL file of the API. Uh, also, they can uh, search the GraphQL type APIs uh, because we uh, extend our unified search to facilitate this. So all of these uh, facilities actually bring uh, bringing a, a different view for GraphQL APIs. Uh, this image displays uh, the view of the uh, publisher once we create the products API importing its STL. Let's look at how we can expose this product management GraphQL service at WS2 API Manager. Uh, before uh, going to publisher, I'll go into management console. Uh, let's log in with admin credential. Sorry. Here uh, you can see I have created two users, Alice and Mike. Uh, so Alice can access a API developer who has been granted with creator and publisher permission. Uh, here you can see, and also uh, Mike, uh, Mike who acts as an application developer, assigned uh, both uh, uh, customer and retailer roles along with the uh, subscribe permission. Uh, now log in with Alice to uh, publisher. Uh, here I am providing the pub uh, Alice credential. Okay, uh, then as a first step, I uh, import the uh, products, uh, products API SDL to create the uh, GraphQL API. Uh, now I'm adding the basic details of the uh, products API. Let's say uh, context test uh, version 100. So uh, this is uh, my uh, uh, GraphQL uh, service. So as the uh, business plan, I here select unlimited and goal. Let's create it. 
So once uh, it is created, the overview page has been uh, loaded. So it displayed the list of operations. If Alice want to uh, see schema definition of the API, she can go to uh, schema definition and uh, uh, import or uh, download the schema definition. Let's uh, move on to the slides again. Here. Uh, so when uh, talking about the authentication for GraphQL APIs, so APIs are, you know, uh, they are uh, mostly exposed to external users. In typical uh, API ecosystem, uh, there are at least three uh, types of parties in NOLD. API developers, application uh, developers, and end users who consume the uh, GraphQL APIs via an application. In our case, uh, Alice develops a products API and make it available to external parties. Next, Mike has a requirement to consume that uh, API. Then he uh, discovers the uh, products API and create, uh, creates an application to subscribe to that uh, products API. Uh, finally, on behalf of the Mike, uh, the end users consume the products API run that uh, uh, subscribed application by delegating the access to the uh, application to access that API. So, Security plays a major role uh, at this point, and uh, as it is crucial to ensure that uh, users who access the API operations are authentic, uh, not every scenario, but uh, there can also be some uh, occasions, uh, like uh, there are some GraphQL API operations should be exposed to uh, the public. Uh, so giving access to uh, anyone without authenticating to the system. Therefore, some operations may uh, need security, some may not, some may not. So considering these requirements, w API Manager facilitates to enable or disable operation level security uh, and uh, also provide the uh, several uh, authentication mechanisms as per the requirement. So uh, in this image, uh, display the view of the operation listing page. So Alice can now assign the security rules for products API as she wish. Let's go to the publisher. Okay, uh, this is the uh, operation page. So by default, security is uh, uh, disabled, enabled for every operation uh, with the requirement we can disable. For instance, in, uh, in our use case, all uh, products operation in products API uh, which retrieves the uh, details of all listed products should be displayed for everyone uh, without uh, authenticating to the system. Therefore, we can make it disabled. Now I'm disabling it. Okay. Uh, uh, so here, uh, if a particular query request uh, include multiple operations, let's say Mike wants to retrieve uh, all products along with the customer details who has been ordered them, then Mike can't invoke the API without a token. Uh, so if an, one operation has enabled the security, uh, it will automatically apply it for whole request. So when uh, I will uh, save it, okay. Now if I am uh, go to the runtime configuration, I can select a single or multiple authentication mechanisms as preferred. So by default, uh, uh, it's enable auth two protocol. Uh, let's uh, keep uh, keep the default one for products API. Uh, let's move to the uh, slides. So as a demonstrator do, uh, API developers can add multiple authentication schemes at the runtime configuration, which facilitates the selection of variety of uh, security mechanisms such as auth two, Open ID Connect, API keys basic authentication, uh, mutual TLS authentication to secure the GraphQL APIs. Uh, when talking about the authorization for GraphQL APIs, you know any software system like a content management system, a human resource management system. So all of those systems uh, exist several user groups which uh, assign for specific tasks. There can uh, be some operation which needs to be uh, accessed by only a subset of uh, users in any organization. Uh, then uh, again, uh, GraphQL API developers uh, raise a problem. Uh, how can we limit the API access to make sure that only 
the authorized parties have the access for a particular operation. WCD API manager can assign different level of permission to the GraphQL operations, allowing fine grain access control with the author scope. Uh, so this enable the API gateway to inspect the incoming uh, query and decide whether to go or not to the backend. So uh, for example, uh, let's consider simple requirement. So Alice need to distribute the privileges among the user groups to access the API. So in this scenario, uh, we can identify two user groups, uh, retailers who can uh, add, remove, uh, see customer details, and customers who can register and order the products. So how can Alice uh, do the access control? uh what uh, uh what about uh alice can uh, create two scope called retailer and customer and she can uh, create a mapping by binding the role related to that uh, uh that uh, specific uh, retail and customer uh, so each subgroups and then assign them to operations to access the operation uh, uh, which are only allowed to allowed for a particular user group let's see uh, how we can do this okay uh, now i'm going to create two scope retailer i have already created this role okay now i'm going to create another scope called customer okay uh so now go to the operation page as i said before adding or removing product and retrieving all the customer details should only be open to retailer user group so uh, now i'm assigning them so remove product uh, should be delegated to the uh, retailer uh, retailer user group and that product same and all customer okay and also uh, similarly adding a custom operation should be open only to the customers to register uh, to the system so now i'm keep the customer for here uh, so what about other operations uh, if i explain the use case the all products uh, operation can be used to retrieve all products details uh, and also a product customer query operation can be uh, used to retrieve uh, either details of a particular product with customer details or uh, retrieve the list of uh, products ordered by a particular uh, customer. Uh, therefore, uh, these rest of uh, operation should be open for both uh, parties. Uh, we can keep uh, them free of access. So now I'm updating the uh, API. okay so once we assign them uh, as a desired to use case unauthorized parties never can uh, be accessed the op this operation uh, which do not belong to them uh, next move to the slide okay in graphql uh, there can be specific operations uh, which can be expensive to execute on the server and there can be a various combination for a particular element referred to uh, in a query so allowing the same red limit to uh, all operation for or treating all of them similarly will not be a, a good idea. Uh, therefore, uh, there should be a mechanism in which the API developers can recognize these expensive operations and assign the red limits to control the API traffic accordingly. So WST API Manager allows you to manage operational level red limits. API developers can uh, uh, API developers are allowed to set rate limits by individual uh, GraphQL operations so for entire API to manage the uh, operation based traffic. So in this image shows uh, how API developer can assign the rate limit uh, value for operations. Let's uh, uh, do the rate limiting on the products API. And here, you know, uh, anyone can fetch the list of uh, products that are available in the store. 
Therefore, I assign the unlimited rate limit for all products. Uh, okay, and uh, all products operation. So uh, both, uh, you know, both uh, retailers and customers have the ability to retrieve the information of the user when uh, fetching the list of products, the details of a particular product, and the uh, details of a particular customer. So there can uh, there are multiple ways to reach the customer element. So I can assign a comparatively high rate limit on the customer operation. So here I'm going to assign uh, 50k per minute for rate limit. Uh, so and the customer registration. So at customer operation, that means uh, will become a more frequent task, right? So therefore, let's assign a high rate limit. Uh, for that one, here I use the same 50k per minute. And uh, uh, but what about the adding or removing products, uh, which is an expensive task? Uh, then I can assign a lower rate limit compared to the other operations, uh, right? So at product here, I can assign uh, 10k per minute, and uh, at product also I can set. 10k product mean uh, but uh, uh, you know uh, for the uh, product and all customers operation may not be either expensive or frequent task so we can uh, assign uh, it uh, 20k minute rate limit uh, all customer and product okay now i am going to save the api so likewise uh, uh, API developers can check the relationship among the operations and decide the rate limits on the API. Uh, now we have designed our products API according to the ads requirements, as we discussed. Uh, now I'm going to publish this design API. Uh, navigate to the uh, lifecycle page. Okay, uh, so you can see now. Uh, AP, uh, products API is in published state and it is uh, categorized as a GraphQL type API. And so this tag can easily uh, identify the GraphQL APIs when the portal has a lot of APIs. Uh, let's move on to uh, next slide again. Uh, know how to consume, uh, consume how uh, consumers can invoke the API. Uh, so once GraphQL API developers publish and expose their APIs as managed GraphQL API, consumers can uh, subscribe and start to consume it. What if there is a portal hosting and advertising those uh, exposed APIs, uh, including uh, several functionalities such as self-register, uh, discover, evaluate, uh, subscribe, and then consume. So application developers uh, life become very easy and convenient if, uh, if there is a portal like that uh, also uh, let's think about the developer portal which offers a list of benefits such as weaving a list of available graphql apis selecting the apis under different categories uh, and view their details and searching graphql type apis and viewing or downloading the SDL documentation of an API and rating, commenting on their consumed API, then others can get an idea of that particular API. So not only that, facilitating a developer-friendly UI for a query tryout. So all of these features help uh, GraphQL application developers to understand the uh, information about the APIs and easily try out the queries and in a secured environment. So uh, the WS API Manager Developer Portal comes with all of these benefits. It has integrated with a, a nice uh, UI called Graphic UI Tryout Console. Uh, let's go move into the Developer Portal to check whether our published products API is available there. Uh, so I can simply uh, go navigate with this. Yeah. So I have the uh, uh, application developer uh, who named uh, Mike. 
So now I'm going to uh, log into the system, my credential. Yeah. Uh, so I have already created an application to uh, subscribe with the products uh, API. Uh, let's uh, subscribe with that API. Okay, and here uh, I can uh, uh, click the manage app to uh, generate the token for the API. So here I can use the scope, but for now I just uh, generate the token I have copied it and if I show you the graphic you will try out console uh, here you can see it right so uh, this is comes with uh, uh, actually this uh, all the all of these features mentioned at the GraphQL uh, language specification or support with this uh, graphic you will try out uh, it has useful features such as syntax highlighting. Let's say uh, uh, also we can real time error reporting. See, and also automatic query uh, or variable completion. Uh, if I uh, try the uh, information of the product, you can see it's automatically uh, <clears throat> suggests me to uh, provide the uh, information right uh, uh, so also uh, there is a nice uh, documentation explorer uh, we, which which can uh, search uh, with markdown support we can see the relationship among those objects likewise so and at the runtime it's uh, this uh, inspect the query result using any promise uh, which resolve the json result uh, here also you can see the uh, explorer uh, without uh, we can uh, just typing the query we can just uh, uh, try out uh, with uh, here let's see see if i need the information we can uh, tick the uh, fields right so uh, also uh, pretty fi can uh, construct the query very nicely so with, with along with these uh, features uh, application developer uh, can easily try out the query uh, next move on to the slide yeah if i move forward uh, let's see uh, how we can consume the products api with some query payloads so here i i'm going to use uh, three use case uh, first one is to retrieve all products and uh, then i'm going to retrieve the customer list for a particular product and then i am going to add a new product so here uh, I have already created the uh, yeah query for the retrieve all products. So without token, I can able to invoke uh, this AP, this operation because we have disabled the security for all of products. Here uh, you can see the uh, response of the our query request. Uh, it uh, responds with what I requested, right? So let's say what happened uh, if I uh, add the customer de details, which I need to see the uh, at the response. Then it says the missing credential. So without uh, uh, pro without a token, we can't access because security is uh, enabled for the custom operation, right? Uh, so let's try out uh, what uh, if i use the token which i have generated previously let's say i want to uh, uh, see a product with uh, id and name uh, along with the customer details yeah so if i construct the uh, such query with the token now you can see it uh, responds with what i request there is three customers along with that uh, this product who ordered uh, t-shirts right uh, so what happened if i uh, uh, try uh, add the product so that one i just uh, copy the query oh you see this is easy for us right so 
I'm trying to uh, add the new uh, product. Here I can use the Petify to uh, construct the query. Uh, let's say, try. then it says the access token does not allow you to access because you know when I'm generating the token, I didn't uh, uh, use the uh, retailer scope, right? So go back to the application and uh, regenerate the token with adding the retailer uh, scope. So I generate the token with the retailer scope here. Now try the same query, which is uh, we are going to add the uh, new product. We can get the uh, here with the history. See, now it is created successfully, right? Now you have an idea how it works under operational security authentication and authorization. Similar to this, operational rate limiting uh, is working on each operation separately. If a request contains multiple operation, it will be throttled out uh, when, uh, when an operation exists with a minimum rate limit is exceed exceeded uh, its desired limit. So this is how we uh, provide the value for GraphQL API operations. Next, move to the slide. Uh, if an API gateway analytics support, uh, 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 more fine grain insight on the uh, GraphQL APIs, right? So it will uh, allow API developers to easily monitor their, uh, their I mean, uh, they are uh, GraphQL APIs, uh, how the GraphQL operations have been consumed and understand the uh, low level performance of the requests that are processed by the GraphQL server. Uh, so WST API manager support uh, this platform uh, to see operational statics on the GraphQL APIs. Let's uh, move into see, uh, move to see the analytics. So here I use uh, this window. Okay, now I'm going to log in with the uh, uh, admin credential to see the analytics on the products API. So there are uh, three portal. Uh, in order to see the uh, details of the API, I use the APM publisher. So there are several widgets uh, showing the several attributes of the API consumptions. Right, so if I move to the usage summary, uh, you can see uh, operation details here. Operation uh, details uh, that are requested by Mike. Uh, these rows uh, belong to the request that I have sent to the backend. So I think you remember that I sent the uh, query to see all uh, customers who ordered a particular product. So that time we uh, consumed two operations such as uh, because uh, a uh, customer and product operation then it will uh, display as a comma separated uh, comma separated way right uh, if i move in to see the api performance uh, this is a, a api latency graph so which displays how latency happen on the each aggregated operational queries and individual uh, operation queries that are processed by the server here, uh, multiple operations can be selected from the defined operation list uh, and able to check how parameters are uh, getting uh, getting with the combination of the operation. So if I select uh, all products, then it shows me the uh, with uh, graph with the several attributes like response time, security, throttling, likewise. And uh, uh, what about uh, if I log in with uh, Mike to see application, uh, application details. So similar to this, uh, if I log in with Mike, yeah, it's populate me to uh, see uh, analytics on the application. Here, if I choose the products on the mic, then I can see the uh, uh, operation that uh, invoke uh, through that uh, application. Okay, so this is how we support the analytics uh, now. Uh, moreover, with this, uh, the gateway support, it has the possibility of integrating with the other analytics tools like ELK, Splunk, likewise. 
uh, move into the slide. Hmm? So uh, meantime, we are actually working on several upcoming features uh, which have been included in our roadmap. So we are going to introduce uh, subscription plans on the query complexities, uh, which allow application developers to uh, decide the maximum limit they need when subscribing to the GraphQL API uh, by selecting a, a ma selecting a matching business plan. So because it is an important feature to secure GraphQL service uh, from malicious, unintentional, or poor queries. So WS2 Gateway will block such queries against the query complexity and uh, depth limit defined at the subscription plan. Uh, so this comes as an uh, alternative rate limit feature for GraphQL API. Also, we are working on the uh, micro gateway support. You know, micro gateway is cloud native API gateway. Uh, that can be used to expose one or more many uh, microservice as APIs. Therefore, we will uh, support this capability for GraphQL APIs along with the SDL file. Also, uh, we are going to support the uh, WebSocket subscription to support real-time communication. Uh, well, uh, that is the end of our presentation for the webinar. Uh, now we would like to answer a few of questions related to this discussion. Please send the question uh, that you have. We will try to choose a few of them and uh, answer before we wind up this session. Oh. Okay, uh, we have one question uh, saying that uh, asking uh, whether this is uh, available in uh, WSO2 2.0 version. And uh, say, uh, in order to answer this, uh, no, we don't have the support in 2.x versions in API Manager. Uh, we added uh, GraphQL support from uh, 3.30 uh, version onwards and uh, uh, in 3.1.0, we added uh, GraphQL, GraphQL uh, tryout console and the uh, operational level analytics features for the GraphQL. And uh, there's another question. Uh, can we enable some kind of two-factor authentication for authentication mechanism? Uh, yes, you can. You can do this by uh, integrating API manager with uh, the WSO2 identity server. It has uh, authenticators available for SMS, OTP, and many more. Yeah, uh, there is another question uh, related to uh, our new feature. What are the new features available in uh, 310 compared to 300? Actually, not more, but the main thing is we have integrated the GraphQL UI to try out the queries easily. And also with the 3.0.0, we uh, didn't support the operational level analytics. Onwards, uh, 3.1.0, we support this feature as well. Other than that, uh, there are uh, no any other features we uh, support with 3.1.0. OK, uh, that's all the questions we are going to take for now. However, we would definitely send out the answer for the rest of questions. Uh, which we were not able to answer for uh, now by the email very soon. And uh, so uh, we would like to ask uh, all of you to uh, try out uh, the GraphQL feature in API Manager 310 and provide us uh, the feedback or any issue you encounter by our Slack channel or GitHub. Also, we would like to invite you all to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can definitely learn a lot of uh informative things from there uh and uh, that's what we have today uh for you uh we hope uh, it has been an informative and useful session for all of you uh our next webinar will be on uh, overview of uh, wst uh, api micro gateway 310 you can follow the upcoming webinar on our uh, website uh, so we would like to thank each one uh, of you uh, for taking time to attend this webinar and showing interest in WS2 technologies and helping us to build this platform. 
Thank you very much. Have a nice day.